It's pretty fair to say that everyone hates assassins. When you get one shot in this game, it feels like there was absolutely nothing you could have done. Maybe you could have built resistances and positioned closer to your teammates, but when a champion can come out of stealth, kill you instantly, and then re-enter stealth to escape, that sounds like it would be a nightmare to play against, and truth be told, it kind of is. However, that gameplay pattern has not stopped one champion from having one of the most interesting histories in all of League of Legends. He's gone through many different iterations, with each build and style having their own unique feeling. He's maxed different abilities, he's used all of his evolves at one point or another, and even swapped roles. From being the most terrifying mid lane assassin that League of Legends has ever seen, to a bruiser jungler used in competitive play because of the utility on his slow, this is the ever evolving story of Cosmos. These champion documentaries take a really long time to make and would not be possible without the support of awesome sponsors. And with Season 11 in full swing, the absolute best place to gain elo is with Pro Guides. The hardest part about getting good coaching is finding one, and Pro Guides has made that process incredibly simple. Ranking up in League of Legends is really hard to do by yourself, and sifting through countless hours of pro player VODs of their solo queue games, grinding all by yourself, and watching replays to keep up to date with meta builds, it can be tough. Let me show you how quick this is with their on-demand coaching feature. It's over here just like a friends list and it will show you which coaches are online or currently in a session. Clicking on any of the coaches will give you a breakdown on all of their critical information, like the reviews from other sessions, the champions they play, their rank, and a little bit about them. They have tons of options that let you get exactly the learning method that you want. Now there's nothing stopping you from gaining elo, so just sign up with ProGuides using the link in the description down below and go message a coach. It'll take less than 30 seconds to get into a coaching session. Thank you so much to Pro Guides for the sponsor. League of Legends in 2021 is very different from the game that it used to be more than 10 years ago. You probably already knew that. With a new patch of changes every two weeks, and a new season every single year, it means League of Legends changes and evolves all the time, just like Kha'Zix. But one way that it hasn't changed all that much over the last several years is around the metagame of roles. We have this idea that it has to be so structured, where we need a top laner who will take teleport, that way he can move around the map and leave his lane. We have a jungler who must take smite and needs to gank and farm the jungle. We have a mid lane mage or assassin, whose job it is to not only kill his lane but move around the map as well. And then we have a bottom lane duo of an 80 carry marksman and support. Seems so odd that it's so perfected, but it didn't always exist that way. In the very early days of League of Legends, players and champions would just go wherever they saw fit, wherever seemed the best for that lane matchup, and it mostly worked just fine. This had a huge impact on Riot's champion design philosophy, and if you look at some of the older champions in League of Legends, there's a reason why, still to this day, Trindamir's E has a big AP scaling, even when the rest of his kit is entirely centered around building physical damage and crit. It's not exactly clear why this would be the case until you know more about the history of the game. Trindamir was designed long ago for a very different meta, where Riot was not trying to force any typical builds on champions. They wanted you to try building AD or AP Trindamir. Take him mid, bot, top, doesn't matter. Just try a bunch of stuff until you find something that's not only fun, but actually works too. As this game started changing, and teams realized more and more that the best strategy was to have a proper jungling champion, a duo bottom lane, and two solo laners, Riot would have to switch up their philosophy and adapt with the rest of the game. Instead of an unstructured, free-flowing way of making champions, they could take advantage of it and start making champions for specific roles. Right around the time that Kha'Zix was in development, the meta became solidified and Kha'Zix would be one of the first ever champions designed to be a jungler. Riot talks about this in their champion design notes by saying Kha'Zix is a flexible jungle assassin who excels at surprising enemy champions and quickly dealing massive burst damage. Moreover, his unique evolution gameplay allows him to adapt to different enemy team comps and strategies by customizing his abilities over the course of the match. 
The staple of Kha'Zix's design is the evolutions, and this was decided to be in his kit at the very beginning and would influence the rest of his design, all the way down to his art, his animation, his voice, and his story. They say that the core idea was a guy that evolves and he can mutate over the course of the match, and they wanted to capture that gameplay the best that they could because it was a strong and compelling idea. The development of Kha'Zix is one of the most important points in League of Legends history and for Riot themselves because he was by far at the time the most complicated champion they were ever going to make. It's likely that they began working on him around late 2011 and early 2012 and because of that if you compare him to the rest of the champions during that time, they were far more simple than he is. The first and most important question for this kit was to figure out how the design would actually go for the evolutions, so what is evolution going to actually mean? Well, there was a ton of possibilities in different directions that they could take it. When would you upgrade? How would you upgrade? Would you be picking one evolution from a first and top tier, and then another from a second tier? How is it going to work? The key distinction that they ended up making was that the evolutions would be all centered around his assassin type playstyle, and the evolutions would not have the player pick between being a bruiser, a tank, or an assassin. They decided that Kha'Zix was going to fulfill this assassin role and you would pick from several different fun, cool assassin tricks for him to evolve, and ultimately that seemed more focused and fun rather than having him pick between a fighter Kha'Zix, a tank Kha'Zix build, or an assassin Kha'Zix build, it seemed too broad doing it that way. As far as his Void theme, he also didn't start as a Void character, instead he was just a Praying Mantis type monster, but the Void theme would end up fitting so well with the story that they wanted him to consume things, they wanted him to become the ultimate predator. The rivalry that he has with Rengar wasn't there from the very beginning, but because they were both hunting type champions, and they drew tons of inspiration from Alien vs Predator, it just kind of worked out in the end. Because of his complexity and how unique he was for the era back in 2012, it would present some brand new challenges for Riot that they hadn't faced before, and one of the immediate ones was to make sure that the evolutions weren't just tied to the skill that you max out. You don't want to have it so that the first ability that you rank up has to always be the one that you evolve. There's actually a lot of situations in which you wouldn't want to do that. Being able to make a separate choice was extremely important from a gameplay standpoint, because otherwise the evolutions don't really add anything. It's just like, oh, if you rank up your Q, you evolve your Q. Instead, you can come up with a unique build where you might evolve your E first and get your wings, but of course the best ability to max is the Q. They also found him extremely hard to balance in their personal playtesting sessions because unlike a traditional character where you have four active abilities that you need to balance, instead you have four abilities in concert with four evolutions. The final thing they wanted to do was to make sure if the gameplay department and his kit was going to be the most complicated they had ever made, to not then slack off in other parts of his design as well. They say that at the time a champion averaged around 22 different animations, but this champion had about 40 during his design and they also doubled the amount of animators working on him. Instead of just two animators, they actually put four. With his base kit and theme finally wrapped up and ready to be released, there was only one more thing to do, which was to make his release skin. And a very interesting thing about that skin, Mech Kha'Zix, is that it was thought to be the most popular skin before the release of Elementalist Lux, which is to say that for several years it was the most purchased skin. This is pretty understandable, because not only was Kha'Zix super popular and a lot of fun to play, but also this skin had even more voice lines and animations, which was a lot more rare at the time. Because of the high bar that he set for champion design, it would mean that his skin would have to reflect that as well. It was the first ever release skin to be priced at 1350 RP. With everything wrapped up and ready to go, Kha'Zix would hit the rift in September of 2012. Kha'Zix has always had these four main abilities that we all know now, but over the years he has gone through a lot of minor changes, and his release is no exception to that, as the release version of the champion had a few differences. The main thing to note is that his R gave damage reduction while in stealth. Keep that in mind because it will be important later on. Also, on his evolved claws, he had execute damage based on the target's missing health. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that he used to have this in his kit because it didn't exist for very long. It would be removed a little while later. 
The general impression right away is that he was decent for the solo lanes and specifically top lane even though he was designed for the jungle. Because of his isolation damage, it made his top lane 1v1s quite powerful, and a popular build for top lane Kha'Zix back in the day was using tier slash mirror mana. This tier would help you constantly poke with your W. As for Jungle Kha'Zix, a common build at the time was Brutalizer into Last Whisper for maximum pen. Both of those items were super efficient and OP as well during those days. You could then turn that Brutalizer into a Yumu's or build a Maw, a GA, a Black Cleaver, or a Bloodthirster. With Kha'Zix being pretty strong in both the solo lanes and in the jungle right after his release, only a couple of weeks later he would actually receive a nerf, and it was a pretty big one. He saw a damage decrease on both his passive and his Q, as well as the very important utility that he gets by slowing targets with his passive. Despite these nerfs, he would stay a strong, relevant, and popular champion for the rest of 2012 and on into 2013. Season 3 and 2013 would be the first year that we would get properly organized leagues for competitive League of Legends. We would see the birth of the LEC, the LCK slash OGN, and the LCS. Instead of just competing in random pop-up tournaments and hoping to do well for cash prizes, instead it was structured and there was a genuine pro circuit to follow. On top of that, in the actual League of Legends meta, there was a player who would change jungling forever and he would change the way that the jungle role would be played, and that is Diamond Prox. Before Moscow 5 and the Season 2 World Championship, jungling was thought to just be a secondary support whose job it is to roam and gank and build supportive items or gold generation items, that way they can eventually purchase some real items, but more often than not they had very low income and they would just play something like Alistar. Alistar jungle was one of the first truly overpowered junglers that would use this strategy to perfection. He would barely even see us and he would mostly just gank you for the entire game. The idea that the jungler can get real income, build real items, even take kills and CS, and you could play around a jungler as your carry player was foreign and unheard of. But with Moscow 5 and their jungler Diamond Prox, they did something nobody else did at the time back in 2012. They would play around him, and he was their most important player. Diamond Prox would invade the enemy jungler. He would hard farm and get real items to absolutely run over the game. Instead of just defaulting to a Maokai jungle, a Nunu, or even an Alistar, he would play Shivana or Lee Sin, use all of his income, and do tons of damage, be really tanky, and just be this unstoppable unstoppable force. This brought a new light to jungling and brought a new definition of a jungler. It wasn't just a ward bot, it wasn't just a second support, it was truly someone who could take over a game and influence the map. Because he was released right around that time, Kha'Zix would be one of the first champions to utilize this new style of jungling, and that's why for 2013 he would be one of the best junglers in the game. During the first ever split of LCS back in spring of 2013, Kha'Zix saw 37 games played with a 59% win rate. The ability to be a flex pick and be moved into the top or mid lane as well also gave him some extra priority in the pick ban process. One of the very first players to actually play him in competitive play in a solo lane was Good Game University's top laner named Fat. The laning phase didn't go all that well because he was matched against a Renekton who was building really tanky with first item Sunfire Cape, but after about 40 minutes they eventually would scale into the late game and they would win in a very close fight. After about 10 months of being one of the best champions in the game, on patch 3.8, Riot would mini rework him. His Q would be given some new effects. Firstly, the unevolved version, if the target was isolated, would now gain 45% bonus damage, and for the evolved version, it would grant 8% of the target's missing health as bonus damage, which was further increased by isolation. His unevolved W was given a 20% slow for 2 seconds, it would have the mana cost be reduced, the AD ratio increased, but it would no longer be able to be cast during the leap. Also on his release, for some reason his E would apply his passive, but that was removed with this patch, and finally the stealth damage reduction with the R was increased to 50%. The W getting a 20% slow doesn't sound like it would do all that much, but as a jungler, sometimes if you have no CC whatsoever, it can make ganks a little bit tricky. While it's technically a damage nerf that his E would no longer apply his passive, Kha'Zix did not care one bit, because the added damage on his Q was extremely high, making his early game one of the best in the game now. 
This mini update that he received was meant to make Jungle Kha'Zix just a little bit better and help out his ganks, but that's not at all what would happen. An indirect shift in the meta would actually cause solo lane Kha'Zix to rise up substantially. In pre-season 4, Riot started favoring heavier damage in the game. On patch 3.14, at the start of the new season, the adjustments to masteries were a lot better for offensive options rather than defensive options. This would lead to a faster paced game than League of Legends had ever seen previously. Quite a few veterans quote Season 4 as the peak of League of Legends, partially because it was just fast enough that it was interesting and fun, and Assassins had tons of outplay potential, but not so crazy like we have now with Aphilios and Samira. Regardless of your opinion on Season 4, one thing is definitely true. The best defense was now a good offense. With this new assassin meta, champions like Zed, Rengar, Talon, Riven, LeBlanc, Cassidy, Ari, and Akali would see tons of play during Season 4. As for Kha'Zix, well during the first few months of Season 4, he would move his permanent home out of the jungle and into the solo lanes because of one item called Elixir of Fortitude. If you wanted to make a list of the all-time most broken items that should have never existed, Elixir of Fortitude, which is sometimes referred to as Red Elixir or simply Red Pot, easily makes the top 3 best items we've ever seen. It was cheaper and arguably stronger than the Red Elixir that we have now with the Elixir of Wrath, but the main catch is that you could start it at level 1. That's right, it was a starting item. Even though it obviously didn't build into any items for you because nothing builds out of this consumable, that's also the case for the Doran's items and we start them all the time. The amount of gold and value that you could get with it in the laning phase would more than pay for itself like 10 times over. The snowball potential was off the charts, and if you took this item on a strong early game laner, you could easily solo kill your opponent several times and deny them tons of experience and gold. Upon activation, it granted you 15 attack damage and an instant burst of 120 to 235 health. It was also only 350 gold, meaning you could get some health potions too. The attack damage alone was more than you could get from a longsword or a Doran's blade start, but also the instant health could be the difference maker in a 1v1 or even surviving a gank. Kha'Zix would abuse this item like no other champion in the game could. He wasn't just hard to lane against, but more like impossible. When isolated, not a single champion would out damage him from levels 1 through 6. This champion, who was designed to be a jungler, was now a mid lane assassin that reaped terror on the rift. He would evolve and adapt to the meta around him and find himself in a new home in the mid lane. His strong solo laning with this item led to not only some nerfs to Elixir of Fortitude, but also some very big nerfs to Kha'Zix on patch 4.3. The changes on patch 4.3 start with some pretty big damage nerfs. First up, his Evolved Claws would have the bonus damage reduced from 8% down to 6%, and the maximum damage against monsters would be reduced from 200 down to 100. Next, Leap's bonus AD ratio was reduced all the way from 80% down to 20%, and while this is a big change in terms of numbers, because he doesn't rely on his Leap for damage, it didn't matter all that much. Lastly, with the big nerfs on his Q, he received some compensation buffs on his ultimate. First, it would actually ignore unit collision when stealthed, and if you evolved it, it would increase the stealth duration by one second. This patch was thought to be the death of Kha'Zix, the squishing of the bug. The champion was supposed to be significantly tuned down, because these damage nerfs are huge. But sometimes in this game, weird things can happen where a champion is meant to be nerfed into the ground and actually gets buffed. Previously, I made an entire video about the best example of this happening in League history, where Lucian was supposed to be completely nerfed and ended up receiving a huge buff that let him play Earth mode in Ranked. The reason that this can sometimes happen is that when Riot nerfs a champion, they may try to compensate for them in other ways. A nerf that is meant to hit damage by a large margin may also come with a buff to their utility. The first time that Ari was reworked back in 2015, they removed the damage amplification on her charm and instead gave her Q a huge movement speed buff. Everybody thought the champion would be dead, because this mid lane assassin was losing roughly 30% of her damage combo. But in reality, on that patch, Ari's win rate jumped to the highest in the game and one of the highest win rates we've ever seen. Because time and time again, we find out that utility in League of Legends is king, and damage and range can sometimes seem overrated. 
What happened to Kha'Zix after patch 4.3 was very similar. The buff to his evolved ultimate increased the duration, and a couple months prior as we went over, the buff to his damage reduction on his ultimate also coupled nicely with it, so it meant that he had a brand new playstyle, dubbed the Reverse Tank Kha'Zix. There was no cast time on using Void Assault either, so at level 6 you could evolve your ultimate and you had 50% damage reduction for 6 seconds. All you had to do was kite around while in stealth and wait for your cooldowns to come back up. You could use your ultimate to tank an important skill shot for your team considering you gained 50% damage reduction, and this made a bruiser build crazy effective. You could go Maw, Frozen Heart, and GA, and that's all you needed to be basically unkillable because you were also still Kha'Zix. You had assassin-like mobility, stealth, and base damage on your isolated targets. The pro player who popularized this build is one of the most famous players in history, Insec. He started stomping Korean solo queue and pro play with this build, and after the patch, even though everybody thought he would be super nerfed, it turned out that he now just became the best jungler in the game with this setup. The damage nerfs were enough to finally move him out of the solo lanes completely and move him back into the jungle, so since patch 4.3, all the way back in 2014, he's basically been a jungler. After being mini reworked twice in two years, Riot felt that the changes on 4.3 didn't solve anything for him, it just made the bruiser build even more broken, so they figured they might as well just try again. On patch 4.9, he got another big round of changes, and this was a really important patch. The base damage on Kha'Zix's Q was reduced everywhere that the target wasn't isolated against your evolved claws. This was to incentivize him to never return to the solo lanes ever again and keep one-shotting you at level 1. This was also the patch where the missing health or execute damage was finally removed from his Q and he has never had that mechanic since those days. With the rebalancing of his Q damage, they also did their absolute best to keep him in the jungle by giving him a better jungle clear, buffing his W damage to monsters and increasing the slow to 50% on his evolved W. And lastly, of course, they had to remove the damage reduction on his ultimate and it was gone for good. No more tanky bug. Heading into the Season 4 World Championship in late 2014, a big question after his now third mini rework is could he stay relevant in the competitive meta as a jungler? And it turned out quickly to be absolutely yes. During this tournament, he was the most picked jungler with 57 picks, and if you played during this time, you might even get a little nostalgic to see what his typical item build was. Spirit of the Elder Lizard, Brutalizer, Last Whisper, Hex Drinker, Black Cleaver, Man, all these items bring back some memories, huh? I wanted to show this typical build to also help explain what made him so strong. All of these items were stupid efficient for him. The Spirit Stone item gave AD, cooldown reduction, health and mana regen while farming the camps, it gave a permanent red buff, extra gold generation, and it was all only 2000 gold. At the time, Last Whisper was only 2300 gold, and it gave 40 AD and 35% total armor penetration. Because it was so cheap and gave total pen, it meant that it wasn't even bad against squishier teams. You would always build this item pretty much right after your spirit. The final item that helped you melt right through the enemy team was the Brutalizer, one of the all-time League of Legends most iconic items. Before it was removed from the game, it was one of the most efficient items ever, if not the most efficient. It gave 25 AD, 10% CDR, and 10 flat armor penetration, which was basically like lethality but even stronger, and all for only 1337 gold. It was so good on its own that even though it built into items like Yumu's Ghostblade and for a time Black Cleaver, players would just sit on the Brutalizer for the entire game and complete other items. With Kha'Zix being the premier jungler at the Season 4 World Championship, some nerfs would be expected, and he received two more on patch 4.18 and 4.20. These nerfs happening back to back would attempt to knock him down a couple of pegs. They would hit his W in a couple different ways with a cooldown increase and a damage nerf, which meant that the bug would hopefully be a lot easier to deal with. And it turns out that he was but not really because of these nerfs. I mean, sure, the nerfs did matter, but the game as a whole also changed a lot during this time too. Indirect changes around him would keep Kha'Zix down for quite a while.
We've now made it to the only time frame in all of Kha'Zix's history that anyone could say that he really wasn't that good of a champion, and from 2015 to 2016, he had some bad years. It's possible to graph out his pro play presence just to show how extreme it was. In 2014, Kha'Zix was banned 102 times and picked 202 times. While that doesn't sound absolutely crazy, you have to remember that Season 4 had a lot less leagues going on and far fewer pro games were played back then, so at the time that was a presence of nearly 50%. However, in 2015, he was not banned a single time and only saw a measly 23 picks. That was just a presence of 1%. 2016 was almost identical, he only had one ban and 22 picks, again just a 1% presence. For 2017 though, he went to the moon, 322 bans, 811 picks, a 37% presence. 2018 was more of the same, 527 bans and 432 picks, a presence of 20%. In Season 9, he would dip a little bit but still clocked in a respectable 212 bans and 231 picks, a presence of 9%. And for last season, in 2020, the story is similar. Once again, he dipped down but still saw 160 bans and 156 picks, still a respectable 6% presence. While 2020 was technically a down year for Kha'Zix, Clearly something happened in that two year time period, and of course we will get into what happened in 2017 and 2018 that made him go insane, but let's jump right back to November of 2014. The end of 2014 saw League of Legends progress from the old age to the new age. It's really when modern League of Legends started. Tons of iconic items started getting removed from the game in 2015, Sword of the Occult, DFG, Sword of the Divine, and Atma's Impaler. The map was updated, the jungle got reworked, scuttle crab was added, dragons no longer just gave global gold and some experience, but instead gave unique and interesting buffs. The biggest part that impacted Kha'Zix was that the entire jungle itself got changed, every camp got changed, new things were added, some stuff, most importantly the spirit stone items were removed, and even smite got changed. Right away there was a playstyle and a champion that the new jungle favored a lot, which was of course patch 4.20 Warwick. That patch saw Warwick become one of the strongest champions we've ever seen. The new jungle item called Devourer was clearly perfect for him, and other attack speed farming junglers benefited quite a bit as well. Obviously, Kha'Zix was not going to build an on-hit attack speed farming jungler item, it just didn't make any sense, so for the first part of the new season, the jungle meta wasn't favorable for him. After a couple of months, Riot would then rework the tank jungle item called Juggernaut into something new, another infamous jungle item of that season called Cinderhulk. This item single-handedly changed the meta for about 9 months. It defined what made champions good and junglers strong. Sejuani and Gracchus building full tank were the norm in both solo queue and competitive play for most of that season. Again, this jungle item meta didn't help Kha'Zix whatsoever. He wasn't going to build the tank jungle item, so he would have to wait for the next meta but it turns out the next meta would be for AP junglers. Runeglaive would be introduced to the game in the summer of 2015 and was such a strong item that just like Cinder Hulk, it would take over the solo lanes. I've made an entire video about AP Ezreal with Smite and that whole story, but the point is that that item would stay meta along with Cinder Hulk from the end of 2015 on into 2016. Tank junglers like Zax, Shazwani, and Gragas were good with Cinder Hulk, and AP junglers like Nidalee and Elise were also good. For about 12 to 16 months in total, Kha'Zix was kept in a somewhat weak state due to the relatively bad state of the other jungle item that he actually used called Warrior. The item was fine and decently cost efficient, but it never defined the jungle meta like the other ones did. Very opposite to 2014 when Kha'Zix and the rest of the AD assassins had fantastic items that would keep them relevant and meta defining, in 2016 it was not like that at all, they were mostly just terrible. Earlier that year had seen the removal of the Brutalizer, and it was a heavy crutch for AD assassins. They would rely on this item in order for them to be strong, and they would suffer for the entire year without it. Rather than just reintroducing an item that was a crutch for these champions, Riot decided that the best approach was to rework Kha'Zix and the rest of the assassins, which brings us to the Season 7 Assassin Class update. They would push the possibilities of the game in ways we had never seen before, giving Talon infinite mobility or close to infinite mobility with his parkour. Katarina got even more mobility with her daggers, Rangar got a QSS on his W, but Kha'Zix got near infinite stealth.
His rework saw a brand new R Evolve mechanic that was meant to actually be viable and better than the previous one. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. This R Evolve would allow him to gain essentially a free activation of his ultimate while entering a bush. I was able to dig up a video that was released during the PBE stages of that new season, and it showcased just how crazy the R Evolve was. It was possible to be nearly 100% stealth while moving through the jungle. The first thing to understand is that with mobility boots, you had just barely enough movement speed to make it from one bush to another. Only in the absolute longest parts of the path were you not permanently resetting the cooldown. But that's not the full story. That's not the entire reason that this was completely and utterly broken. Control wards would not reveal him, even if you place them in the bushes. With this assassin update also came the vision and ward rework, and it made it so control wards would reveal champions like Evelyn and Rengar who have camouflage, long forms of stealth. But Kha'Zix's ultimate is in the invisibility class and is not revealed by them. Now usually that's not a problem, and in today's game it really isn't because he's only stealth for a couple of seconds at most, but in this case, it was possible for you to run from your side of the jungle, through each of the bushes, resetting the cooldown, and after about 18 seconds of permanent and total invisibility, you could end up in the enemy jungle with no counterplay of any type. When Cossacks would evolve as ultimate first, he would end up being invisible for like half the game, and from your perspective, he kinda just teleports from his side of the jungle to yours, and stands right on top of you to kill you. It's a little crazy to think that this ever existed, and even with this PBE footage showing the possibilities, the thing is that it didn't catch on right away. The hype after his rework was all about the Q changes, and he would instantly become a good jungler once again. The Q evolve, especially with the brand new lethality items to build like Edge of Night, would just be a little too alluring at first, and for a good reason too, because it was quite strong. The very first nerf that he would receive was early on into the season on patch 7.3. This reduced his overall damage output by a lot, hitting not only the cooldown refund on his isolated Q, but also the damage. Even with those nerfs, it didn't slow him down one bit. He was being played in competitive play, he was being played all over solo Q, and this bug was fully back in action. The Q Evolve playstyle was dominant for all of the early parts of Season 7, until we get to the summer of that year. On back-to-back -back patches, Kha'Zix received some huge changes. Firstly, on patch 7.13, they nerfed his Q a little bit, but in compensation would buff the R Evolve. Then, on the next patch for 7.14, Duskblade would see a full rework, where it became the strongest item in the game. This version of the item was the most powerful we had ever seen. It was blatantly and extremely overtuned. It could turn any champion into a one-shotting AD assassin so long as you built the item. With this new item under his belt and a brand new playstyle to evolve your ultimate first, he would end up being even stronger than he was at the beginning of the season, which is something that almost nobody saw coming. After 714, he became the best champion in the game, period. This is when he would reach his highest ever win rate and pick rate. Everyone wanted to abuse him for free low and nobody wanted to play against it. What are you going to do versus permanent stealth that you cannot counter with control wards? For pro play specifically, he was the favorite champion among two Korean junglers, Score and Trick. Both of these guys showed just how good the champion could be when you used him at the highest level. The problem with pro play assassins is that they usually require the game to be chaotic and uncoordinated with a lack of vision control, but in this case, the R Evolve didn't matter. He exerted an absolute crap ton of pressure, and if he was ever in your side of the jungle, anywhere near your quadrant of the jungle, you had to play safe, because chances are he's sitting right on top of you. He could be there. This level of power is what led to his ridiculous pick rate and ban rate in competitive play. For 2018, the Season 8 Runes Reforged rework would bring a whole change to the system of runes and masteries. It saw Ardent Sensor and Enchanters also get nerfed, which would open the door once again for assassins to be strong. Thunderlord's Decree, which was Kha'Zix's primary keystone, would become Electrocute, and this has always been a standard and solid option for him. Right now, Dark Harvest is the rune that stacks up when you damage champions who are below half health, and it makes it great for scaling as well as executing targets. 
It might be hard to remember the original version of Dark Harvest since the one that we know today where you deal damage to a champion who is below half health and then that will stack up throughout the game and it's good for champions like Karthus was introduced two years ago now and hasn't been changed all that much, but for the entire year of 2018, Dark Harvest was pretty different. Back then, Dark Harvest would grant you souls whether you killed large minions, large monsters, or champions and then your next attack would become soul charged. After you got 150 stacks, you would essentially have a very long time to use this soul charge, giving you 300 seconds to use it, which pretty much is all the time you would ever need. This keystone would provide Kha'Zix a way to benefit from both farming and ganking at the same time, and the thing about Kha'Zix is that he's always been able to do a little bit of both, as some Kha'Zix players prefer to spam gank and force tons of fights and dives, while others prefer to power farm and scale a little bit depending on the jungle matchup. The versatility of the original Dark Harvest meant that it was used interchangeably along along with Electrocute as Kha'Zix's main keystone. On patch 8.2, he saw his first big changes for the year 2018. They decreased the passive ratio but buffed his bonus AD on his Q, which was a worthwhile trade-off for the farming Kha'Zix playstyle since you can always use your Q to farm your camps, but your passive only applies to champions. That patch would almost be the final nail in the coffin for the R Evolve first since the passive damage would help make up for the lost damage if you don't evolve your Q, but there was one more patch on 8.6 that would be the final blow. The isolation bonus damage was now simply way too strong to pass up, and with them removing the 20% increased damage to monsters on his Void Spike, it meant that you had no choice but to evolve Q first. All of these changes meant that the Q Evolve was now mandatory and the R Evolution was left in a very weird spot, and it didn't make a lot of sense, he didn't have the capacity to use it due to the damage loss, which is why, on patch 8.11, he would be partially reverted from his rework about a year and a half prior. Reverting the ultimate would make Kha'Zix easier to balance, but failed to make the R Evolution once again worth it either. It would revert back to being a somewhat niche and interesting option for him, but probably not something that you want to use every game and doesn't always make a lot of sense. For all of 2018 in professional play, as previously mentioned, he was still fantastic. He would pick up right where he left off from dominating Season 7 and had no problem transitioning into Season 8 due to these couple of changes as well as Dark Harvest. Attic should know that this is happening. They get a blue trinket down. 5k and drop and Broxton needs to make his way in immediately. Jack Troll's trying to find the Kha'Zix. Can he get out of it? Oh, he oh, it. It. oh god! The turn, the burn! He gets deleted, but that is exactly what Fnatic wanted. Facts. Gonna allow Jack Troll to body block. Can they get it's the going low. 4K dropping Broxa? Hero moment. This is your chance. 3K getting ever lower. Who's actually gonna take it? And he's Broxa gets it! Are you kidding me? Takes it back, gives his life, but saves the day for Fnatic. Heading into the Season 8 World Championship, he would also break new grounds in the skins department just as he did with his release. Championship Kha'Zix is one of my favorite skins in the game, period, and during the entire event, it was possible to earn and pay for a bunch of chromas for this skin as well. In total, he would have 24 chromas for this skin, one to represent each team that attended the World Championship. That was already the most chromas for any skin ever, but later on he also got a golden chroma with the rest of the Championship skins, making him now have 25 chromas for one skin. One of the best games of Kha'Zix that year is one that I remember actually watching live, which was Santorin during the NALCS Summer. It was back when he was playing for FlyQuest, and he played against CLG and Rainover, and he locked in his Kha'Zix and finished with a score of 10-3-6. He was all over the map starting 5-1. After just getting this awesome new championship skin with all of these chromas, you would think that the next season would be even better, and he could continue that momentum from the previous two seasons. And while he was not a bad champion by any means, he would slow down a little bit, and one reason could have been because of one patch. About halfway through the year in 2019, something weird happened with Kha'Zix. Let's talk about the time that he had a little bit of a bug problem. On patch 9.13, Riot made some changes just like they always do, and sometimes they don't always tell us about some things that happen behind the scenes, either in the code or in the gameplay, and for whatever reason, something in Kha'Zix's gameplay got messed up. Things that normally would not cause him to lose isolation on the target, for example, a Caitlyn Trap or a Karthus Wall, all of a sudden were making the enemies not be seen as isolated. And considering how much damage he really loses when a target isn't isolated, this was a game changer. This would actually be a big nerf. 
The Kha'Zix mains reddit worked really hard on compiling a comprehensive list of all of the things that were causing these problems, and thankfully within just the next patch cycle, Riot got it sorted out and everything was fixed. Except for, apparently, Yumi. Now, nobody is really sure if Yumi is supposed to block a champion from being isolated when she's attached, nobody's sure whether it's supposed to count or not, but as of right now, she does indeed make them not isolated. Another reason why he wouldn't have the same level of power in competitive play for 2019 is that 2019 saw the resurgence of tanks. AD carries, AD assassins, and AD bruisers would slowly dip during that season, and we would see a rise of tank champions using Grasp of the Undying, using Aftershock, and building extremely tanky items. He would be given some of his base damage back that he lost in previous changes in nerfs with a nice buff on patch 9.15. With the help of these buffs, something awesome happened in the world of Kha'Zix. Metaphor is a North American multi-season challenger level jungler who is also a streamer, content creator, and these days he actually makes videos about Warzone, which is really cool. Anyway, for several seasons, he was one of the best junglers in North America, being known for champions like Evelyn, and of course, also Kha'Zix, and in 2019, he would hit rank 1 playing mostly Kha'Zix. Even though this was not his absolute peak power and was better in previous seasons, good Kha'Zix players can always make him work for solo queue, him thriving in the chaos and players not warding against him, not knowing how to play against his isolation damage, gives him tons of solo carry potential. But in terms of significant events for Kha'Zix, especially at the pro level, he really wouldn't do much for the rest of 2019 and even in 2020. In solo queue, he picked up a little bit of traction because of a build optimization. Typically, Kha'Zix builds like a full assassin using runes like Dark Harvest or Electrocute, building Lethality, Ghostblade, Duskblade, all that kind of stuff. But in 2020, a Conqueror Kha'Zix build with a slightly tankier Bruiser setup was kind of the meta for a while. Using items like Red Smite and Black Cleaver would allow him to stay in the fight, use his Evolved W for 90% slows more often, and he also had much more survivability. He also received a fantastic buff on patch 10.14, where Taste Their Fear would have the isolation bonus damage increased from 100% all the way to 120%. During the previous World Championship, sadly, Kha'Zix was only picked one time, and it happened in the worst way possible. Deep into the tournament, the favorites out of the LPL, top esports, were in a best of five against European underdogs Fnatic. Fnatic would explode out of the gate in this series, and would jump to a 2-0 lead in the quarterfinals. Being just a single victory away from a Final Four appearance, Fnatic self-made wanted to go for an aggressive jungle pick. He had just stomped the previous game as Kindred, and was likely feeling extremely confident in himself. Surely with how well they played as a team in the previous two games, Fnatic would just clean sweep top esports in one of League's most improbable upsets ever. But for Game 3, self-made picked Kha'Zix, and well, it did not do very well. Finishing with a score of 2-6-4, Selfmade had a rough game to say the least. All of Fnatic's momentum had been squashed, and even though they started off 2-0 and were still up 2-1 in this series, something about just how terrible that game 3 went made a reverse sweep seem like it was all but guaranteed. Self made a Fnatic their way, look at the cheeky! They see him, they see him, they blue tricked it over the wall! They absolutely do, they absolutely do, he's not going to be able to get in range! Oh, that's he's a flash in! Leap forward, not going to be able to do it! All of a sudden, Self made is the sacrificial bug! While that's going on, Hillis Baron empowered Kenna minions, three of them! They want the win! to chip away on the Nexus star, Blippo's going low, what can Jackie Love do? So much damage! As we've already seen, the first Nexus star falls, Self made goes in, he's squashed under the boot of Jackie Love! Knight stays alive long enough as Hillisang runs away, Nemesis! is down, the shockwave kills Buippo, and Reckless can all but watch his Nexus die. Top Esports bounce back in Game 3. Season 11 reworked the entire item system, and just as with all other champions in the game, Kha'Zix would be heavily affected. At the very beginning of this preseason, AD lethality items were completely broken. Eclipse and Collector were not only being abused by Jin and Misfortune, but of course could be abused by champions like Kha'Zix. The interesting thing specifically for Kha'Zix is that now that Eclipse was nerfed, it's opened up a couple of different options for him in terms of mythic choices. If you like the Conqueror and Bruiser type build, you can actually take Gore Drinker now and act as a pseudo Kane or Aatrox. 
For the normal Assassin Kha'Zix setup, Eclipse, Duskblade, and Prowler's Claw are all viable, and if you ask each individual Kha'Zix main what they prefer and what they build, they'll tell you something different. Recently, the Serpent's Fang has been buffed as well, which will help prevent enchanter metas from constantly crowding out assassins completely just as it did with Art and Sensor. So far, most of the changes in Season 11 have been beneficial for AD Assassins as well as Kha'Zix. He's one of the better champions in the jungle right now, and especially with other overpowered junglers such as Hecarim, Udyr, and Olaf getting nerfed a bunch, it's going to rocket Kha'Zix right to the top of the priority list. Kha'Zix has one of the most interesting stories in all of League of Legends, and I'm really glad we got to cover it today. It's incredibly cool to see the progression of this game and the standards that Riot used to have for champion design. The fact that on his release in 2012, he was considered revolutionary and set a new bar for champion design by having a whopping 40 animations is pretty funny if you compare it to today's standards with champions like Aphilios, who has hundreds. His champion model and complexity holds up pretty well with today's standards, even though it's almost been 9 full years. Finally, despite around 25 to 30 total changes throughout the years, his abilities are mostly the same as they were on his release, albeit just a lot of minor tweaks. They hit the nail on the head with the theme of an assassin on this character. His isolation and his evolution fantasy is personally my favorite in the assassin class. Is he all that fun to play against? Well, no, not really. Is he kind of broken? Yeah, he is. But I think it's hard to say that he isn't at least incredibly cool and unique. If you enjoyed today's Kha'Zix Complete Champion history, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like and comment down below. These videos take a long time to make, so anything you can do to help me out with the algorithm and also checking out my Patreon would mean a lot to me. I appreciate regardless that you made it to the end of the video, and like I said, on my Patreon, I have video editing tutorials if you're curious about the editing in these videos. Thanks a lot, I'll see you guys next time, and let me know which champion you would like to see next.